Hey fish heads, I'm Jason Halliker and welcome to a very special episode of the Fish Head Chronicles. This week biologists from around the state have come to the New River. We're working on the Lower New and we're doing some depletion sampling with a lot of boats. It's going to be a real exciting week. We're going to get a lot of different types of fish, so stay with us. All right, it's a beautiful morning. John Copeland's with us today. He's the biologist here on the New River and he's in charge of this whole uh, operation today and it's a pretty pretty epic one. So John, just give us a little overview on, on what we're doing out here today. So we're here to do population estimates primarily on smallmouth bass. But of course when we do that we also take a look at some of the other species because we find if we can estimate population size for smallmouth it often leads to similar data in other species. Not all species but a lot of other species. Uh, now tell us a little bit about some of the game fish that you find in this river. This is an impressive fishery. Well, you know, historically the New River really was what ichthyologists would call depauperate. So it had very few species before man got involved with introducing things. Mm -hmm. So historically, if you look back at a like 1872 report by the U.S. Fish Commission, one of the statements that stands out to me is they said there's little else in the main stem new other than the catfish and they were referring to the channel catfish and flathead catfish which are native here. Other than that, the only other uh, popular sport fish group that was represented at that time was probably the green sunfish which is a native sunfish and they never get much over five or six inches long. So through the eight, late 1800s they introduced, introduced things like smallmouth bass, red breast sunfish, rock bass, ones that are popular sport fish species today. Mm -hmm. And then of course in more recent years, starting in the 1960s, we introduced the, the muscalunge, or what people call the muskie. Also the walleye as well, right? Walleye are resident in the New River. There's actually upstream of Plater Lake, which is the major impoundment on the New River. There is a, a presumed native population of walleye based on their genetic strain. Some of those fish make it downstream of Plater Lake, but not in the abundance uh, that you would expect. It's more so in Plater Lake and upstream. Okay. Now, I don't mean to brag a little bit, John, but we got a pretty tight group here. we got yeah. a lot of talented folks, and uh, I think you'd be hard-pressed to find this type of extensive sampling effort anywhere in the country. So to take us through exactly what we're doing as far as uh, collecting the fish. What do we do with this data once, we, once we've collected it? Okay, so we assembled uh, aquatics personnel from across the state of Virginia. Every region that has an aquatic staff is here to help because we needed, for one thing, the equipment that they can bring, electrofishing boats. So using electrofishing, we can get a, a decline in numbers of fish each time we go through an area and generate a population size estimate based on that decline. Of course, the fish are held out each time in live wells and returned to the river at the end of the day unharmed by their experience, other than maybe being, you know, a little oozy from being shocked during the process. Okay. But it takes a lot of people to do this work so you can figure we have about 40 people out here today it's a real good partnership between the department of game and inland fisheries and the virginia tech's department of fish and wildlife conservation so we have a graduate student here who's doing musky research and she's gathering data that would be beneficial to that at the same time that i'm getting data on smallmouth and other populations that's excellent stuff uh you know this river is is an amazing fishery and you know, and if, even if you don't fish, come out here and utilize this resource. There's lots of public access points. You can canoe, kayak, wildlife watch, swim in the river. It's a great place to come, bring the family down, and wet a line. Thanks, John. Appreciate it. Anything else? Nope, that's it. <laughs> <laughs> Joining me now is Sasha Das from Virginia Tech. Sasha, I just talked to John Copeland about your project, working with the muskie. Muskies are very polarizing. You either love them or you hate them. And we're doing a lot of work with you guys on uh, some of the diet work. So elaborate a little bit on that. Sure, so I'm at uh, Virginia Tech working in the Fisheries and Wildlife Department. And we are looking at uh, musclelunge population dynamics. So they did a study on muskie in the New River about 10 years ago. And um, there was concern that they might be affecting the smallmouth population. And they found that uh, there wasn't a whole lot of smallmouth consumption. and so. My project, 10 years later, there have been a few regulation changes, so they think there might be more of them, um, they might be larger, so just kind of getting a hold of what their population looks like. Um, 
and part of that obviously is a diet, a diet study. So we want to know if they're eating the smallmouth because he said polarizing big concern right, among sure. anglers. So, um, and so far we found some pretty cool things. Mostly we've um, seen a lot of sunfish and rock bass, um, some suckers. We found some uh, pretty cool things. So we found a wood duck in one wow. and a, a grieve in another. So there's some pretty, pretty cool things. Very cool. Um, and now you've, you've uh, started to expand it out too as well. You're, you're uh, looking at other fish diets as well. Right, so since we haven't seen a whole lot of smallmouth and what we've got so far, um, we're looking to see if there's potential for dietary overlap. So um, today we pumped, or we tubed, uh, looked at the stomachs of a lot of smallmouth. So um, we're hoping to go through that data and see if there's any overlap with what we've found in the muskie. And then we also looked at catfish as well. So they're another big predator see if they overlap with smallmouth. So if something is changing in the smallmouth population, maybe that might have something to do with it. All right. Well, keep us up to date on the results. Yeah, keep sure. up the great work. Thanks, Sasha. Nice to meet you. All right. See you. All right. We've sampled the fish. We've pulled them off the river. Uh, we've sorted them into game species and non-game species. Derek Wheaton uh, is with us today, and he specializes in these non-game species. Tell us a little bit about what you guys do once we've collected these fish. Um, well, we are tallying each species, we're identifying each species. A lot of these guys are real small and hard to identify between different species. So we're getting a relative abundance of which species are more common, less common, that sort of thing. And we're kind of paying special attention to the ones that we don't pick up a whole lot. Some of these shiners, they, they're not nearly as common as some of the ones that you'll find thousands of in a school. So. Okay, very <clears throat> nice. Um, now, a lot of anglers out there you know, just view these guys as bait fish, which they are. People use them as bait and so forth. However, uh, they are a really important uh, component of the ecosystem. Uh, elaborate a little bit on that. Well, they're yeah, they're definitely a, a link in the food chain. Um, for every for every one pound smallmouth bass you catch, you know how many how many little shiny, you know, probably a couple hundred little shiners have eaten to get to that get to that size. Right. You know, so it uh, it connects all the tiny little critters in the stream and ends up feeding the larger larger animals like that. Right. And they're kind of like a canary in the coal mine. I mean, they, they can be indicators of how well the water quality is doing and so forth. So the more diversity you have, the better, right? Yeah. And a lot of them are more more sensitive to water quality issues than the game species are. So you can have smallmouth bass, but when especially some of these more rare shiner species start dropping off, you know, there could be a problem. Absolutely. Now, if you guys <clears> like uh, some of the underwater photos and underwater video we've been posting on our Facebook, you can check out Derek's page. He's got the Enchanting Ectotherms page, because he's a, a really talented videographer and photographer when it comes to underwater stuff, so make sure to check that out. For more information on the New River, please visit our website. Click on Fishing, Rivers and Streams, and New River.